Sora is about to take your job. Here's why. Oh, my goodness. Right. So this is a person walking. We know Sora can do this kind of stuff. Um, walking towards a bike, getting on the bike, Airhead. This is from Shy Kids based in Toronto. Uh, they've made something that I think previously was not possible. What? A person with a balloon for a head? So you're creating new realities, new characters that stay continuous through shots. This is why Hollywood, this is why actors are so concerned right now. This is why any creative should be concerned. Me as an audio creative, oh, look at that prickly situation. Not so good for the balloon head. Um, um, it's it's concerning, right? If this can be done with video, it can easily be done with audio and other mediums so creatively, so well, so surreal, in space, in different lands, different areas, different climates, all with the click of a button and a quick prompt. That is absolutely insane. And I'm sure you can place it next to a cat, realistic cat. Casey Nice, that style there on a board, at a concert, in the water. Man, I'm telling you, this is freaking nuts. Wow. Okay, so that is, yeah, just showing what is possible there. Such a realistic situation created with a few prompts. Shy kids there made using Sora. That is totally nuts. Okay, next here we're hurtling into what seems like the multiverse with Paul Trillo, an artist, writer, and director. And this just feels so trippy. This is like reality created by Sora. And look at that. Wow. Look at the detail on that. Like, I mean, it's game over for game designers. Like, graphics like this on demand turning into a glitter ball and floating away. That's, like, nuts and insane. These are all generated with Sora from OpenAI. Just incredible. Look at that. Through to the pyramids. Through the pyramids. Wow. Straight into architecture and other places and a library. And this is all so continuous and feels so realistic. And this is stuff that would take CGI and multi-million dollar productions to make can now be made with the, the click of a mouse and the typing on a keyboard. A trash man break dancing. Whoa. This is super cool. I love it. I love it. But I'm also really scared for the future. What does this mean for creatives? Like, where do we stand as individual creators? Is this going to be our best superpower ever? Or is it going to completely replace us? Absolutely insane. Look at that. Different camera angles and then, whoa, tripping out a tube. That is just, I love it. And I'm also very scared about it. But this is also an amazing opportunity. And this is uh, Nick Cleverov. And uh, wow, that is one psychedelic watch there. So this is uh, Los Angeles, uh, California creative storyteller who's using Sora to tell, like, you know, black and white. Look at that bicycle repair. I'm not sure if it got the wording quite right there, but this is all going to be ironed out. Look at that car coming out of the ocean. And just this is just situations that can't exist. Salt soda. I mean, look at the, the wow, and the mushroom city. Incredible, incredible. Okay, let's have a look at this one from August Camp, a musician and researcher who's been allowed access to Sora to create stuff. And I tell you what, that is pretty nuts. The fact you can go to space and have multiple things happening there, that is wow. And all the text on the screen seems to be real and... How are they doing that? That's blowing my mind. Some kind of crystal, just like ancient alien technology. I don't know. Okay, next we've got something here from Josephine Miller. She's a creative director, been using Sora to create amazing, look at that amazing artwork, like glamour, fashion on bodies using Sora. That is something else, isn't it? Now we've got something from Don Allen, Beyond Our Reality. Wow, a journey through parallel worlds. Look at this. How are we going to know what's real anymore? These creatures that don't even exist showing up like a giraffe flamingo, giraffe mingo, something like that. That is amazing and so realistic. When pigs fly. So <laughs> what are we going to say? You, you go to your teenager now and you say, that you say, yes, you can have that when pigs fly and they'll show you that clip and say, well, pigs are flying. The whalepus. An elegant blend of whale and octopus. This is just like out of this world. Crazy. The eel cat. Look at the, oh my goodness, an aquatic enigma with the sleekness and curiosity of a real cat. What's this? The bunny armadillo. The the, the bunadimo. 
Bunadillo? <laughs> is that even something? Captivating our hearts. Uh, oh, the horsefly. I tell you what, I don't want to mess with that. I know horseflies give nasty bites, but that one looks like it would get me head off or something. <laughs> wow. And the reptilian aroo. The reptilian aroo. Oh, yes. Why not? This is just mixing all kinds of non-existent with the fox crow. What? Okay, like I'm just blown away. And yeah, I'm really thinking about the future of creative work with Sora. Okay, and let's have a look finally here. Alex Rabin has created something with Sora. And this is just pretty cool 3D models transformed into something that's real using Sora. That is incredible. So you can turn something that you've thought of in your mind into something that's real and animating in front of you. Okay, so there you have it. That is Sora in action. Some people are already getting early access to this technology and figuring out just how to use Sora to make amazing creative stuff. So I'm really thinking about it myself. What does this mean for the future of creativity? You know, are we going to be replaced? Is this going to be a tool that we can use to augment ourselves? Is it the way that you prompt it, the way that you use it, or will it literally end up taking job after job after job and who knows what the future will hold? I, I definitely spend time thinking about this as a creative. As an audio producer, I'm well aware that my voice can be replaced. I'm well aware that my music can be replaced. My sound effects that I make can be replaced. Even the way I produce and create amazing audio can now be 100% done by AI. So where do I put my effort? Where do I put my skills? Where? What do I choose to learn? Do I choose to learn more of these AI technologies and how to use them to best make something creative? I think that somehow always there is going to be a human element there, right? There's always going to be people on YouTube, for instance, who will want to watch YouTube videos and see, see real creators, like real humans, and know that that thought and that idea comes from a real human and that I'm not reading from a script and telling Telling you my thoughts from chat GPT, but they're actually coming from my brain, right? This is the, yeah. I have a bit of deep thinking to do, and I, th I think you do too, but I would love to know what you're thinking at this stage after looking at those Sora generations. Where do you think this puts us in the landscape of creativity and content creation specifically online? If you are a content creator, what does this mean for you? You know, podcasts can be 100% automated with AI voices. You know, movies will soon be automated. Games will be generated programmatically on the fly by this kind of technology. And instead of waiting for a game production studio to make something, you'll just see a game created instantly in front of your eyes. In fact, so much so that you'll be able to choose the kind of game you want to play. And technology like Sora from OpenAI or equivalent will generate that game for you. We've already seen this with announcements from the, the popular game Fortnite, where immediately they're talking about having the possibilities to generate whole new worlds. And I'm under no illusion that Sora will play a pivotal role in making brand new gaming worlds. So whether you're in gaming, whether you're in movies, whether you're in audio, whether you're in written word, spoken word, whatever it is, this AI technology is getting really, really good.